Nikki asked me, how do you motivate yourself to draw the hard stuff? It's hard enough to sit down and draw when you don't feel like drawing, but it's even harder when you have to draw something that you're not good at, or you don't feel confident in drawing, or I don't know, it's really hard. I've been there so many times. There's still things where I, I dread drawing them because it looks complicated and I doubt myself. In fact, when I started making comics, I avoided drawing things like backgrounds for the longest time. Like, if you look at my my first comic, Sovereign, there are like zero backgrounds. There's like little fuzzy impressions of backgrounds, but there's nothing solid for a very long time. And I did that because drawing backgrounds was really, really hard. I found it very difficult, so I avoided doing it all together, and I just kept making comics anyways, which was really silly, and I have since learned to eat my greens and do the stuff I don't want to do. So I will share with you how how I've gotten around making myself do hard stuff. <laughs> so how do you motivate yourself when things are hard to draw? Well, I think my number one piece of advice for this is to motivate yourself with necessity. My biggest example of this, backgrounds aside, is probably me and the crows. <sighs> The Crows. My comic, The Magpie. It is a horror comic that features lots and lots of crows. There are characters that are crows, there are crows in the background everywhere, and when I started drawing Magpie, I had no idea how to draw birds or crows. And I spent way too long working on The Magpie not knowing how to draw birds. I never sat down and learned. However, because they've been included in this comic that I'm working on, I did eventually have to learn how to draw them. What I started doing when I first ran into a scene with a crow and I didn't know how to draw them, the first thing I did was do a little study session before I had to draw that panel. So I'd go and grab a bunch of references of crows, I'd do some quick little studies, and then I'd try my best to like work that into the panel. So what happened was like my crows did turn out pretty stiff, pretty weird looking, not the best crows, but they got the job done, they made the panel work, it was fine. But what I did eventually have to do and it did take Bone sitting me down and being like, oh my god, fix these crows, they are terrible, you need to learn how to draw them. So I sat down and I started doing study sessions. I drew a ton of different birds. I grabbed bird skeletons and references of bird skeletons, not actual ones. I don't know where to get those. But I drew a bunch of like skeletons and figured out the musculature and how the feathers work. And I just did a ton of studying just on birds for a very long time. And now... I know how to draw birds, and I did all of it even though I hated it because it was necessary for the comic I was working on. That's happened a lot with a lot of things I used to find difficult to draw. I mean, sometimes I still find them difficult, let's be real. But comics really have forced me to draw many things that I had zero confidence in when I started. For example, drawing full bodies, trying different character designs, drawing backgrounds, drawing animals, furries. All that stuff, I had no idea until I started making comics that included all these things. So in addition to like making it necessary to draw these things with say like a comic or something, make sure that it's like a project that is super shiny, something that makes your heart go doki doki and, and fill with love and joy. So if like your dream project is to work on a comic or an animation or illustrations or whatever it is, just whatever makes you super happy and super excited, Fill that project with things that are hard to draw. <laughs> this will probably motivate you because it's your dream project and you want to make it look really good. And so if you're bad at drawing cars, put lots of cars into the backgrounds of your dream comic. Have a scene where your characters have to travel by car. Whatever it is, put it in there. Put in those backgrounds and those full body shots. And because you are in love with this project, and it's something you've always wanted to make, you'll be super motivated, I hope. For me, that was comics. For you, it might be a whole different creative project, and that's totally cool. Just whatever gets your, your heart thrumming with excitement. And also, remember the power of positive reinforcement. This is probably one of the best ways to motivate yourself. I mentioned it in, like, every video I've ever done about, like, motivation. Giving yourself rewards for attempting to do hard stuff will make you want to do hard stuff more. I know personally, and I know a lot of other artists have talked about this, it's very tempting to like 
beat yourself up with guilt for not being like a perfect artist who does all their studies and spends hours and hours and hours on their art. Like it's very, it's very easy to get into that headspace where, you know, you studied for five minutes and you're kicking yourself because this thing still doesn't look good and you don't want to work on it anymore. And oh my gosh, you're such a bad artist because you're not finding this fun. Don't do that. <laughs> it's better to reward yourself for trying for five minutes to work on this really hard thing than beat yourself up for not doing it amazing the first time. And these rewards that you give yourself for trying to draw this hard stuff can be like just whatever you find fun or rewarding. If it's like a snack or taking a break to draw like your OCs being cute or to watch a cool YouTube video, that's fine. Those are all really good rewards. Just whatever will get you motivated to draw the next hard thing. And when you're doing positive reinforcement, it's also important to set goals. So for example, I used to work in coffee shops. Um, I'd usually go with friends, we'd work on writing and comics and whatever we had to do, and we would set goals. So it's like, okay, if I can pencil three more pages, I can go get another treat from the coffee shop or get a refill on my coffee or whatever it was. I mean, make sure that these goals are reasonable. If it's like, I have to finish 70,000 studies for like eight hours every day, that is not a good goal. Set smaller goals. Be like, if I study for an hour, I get to go watch a cool video. That's a good goal and a good reward. And it's better to reward yourself very often when you're beginning this because it'll create a really positive association with studying and working on difficult things in your brain. So that as you build up this habit of studying or working on hard stuff or whatever it is, you feel motivated because you remember all these good associations with it instead of only feeling guilt and despair. And my final piece of advice for working on stuff that's really hard is to do timed study sessions. I mention this also quite a lot when I talk about art motivation because it works. Set a timer. 10 minutes is a really good like amount of time to work. 20 minutes is also great, but 10 minutes is probably a great way to start building this habit of studying. Set a timer for 10 minutes and draw. When that timer is done, you don't have to draw the stupid hard thing anymore. Now, 10 minutes probably doesn't sound like a lot of time to get into the rhythm of drawing or get into like the zone of drawing, but you'll find it's just enough time to get into it and get a little bit of work done, but not so long that it's super daunting and you don't want to do it. I find when I tell myself to work on art for three hours, I don't want to do it. It sounds really hard. It sounds really frustrating. If I get distracted half an hour in, I really beat myself up about it because I'm like, oh my gosh, I was supposed to work hard for three hours and I'm just goofing off now. It's terrible. But when I sit down to work for 10 minutes, I can do that really easy. It's just 10 minutes. It doesn't take a lot of time to dedicate to anything. It's not a huge commitment. It's something I could do before I go to work or when I'm waiting for dinner to cook. It's easy to slot into your day and it's easier to stomach, I guess. <laughs> I also find once I sit down and draw for 10 minutes, I don't always want to stop when the timer is up. Sometimes I will go for longer and that's really great, especially when you finally get into the rhythm of like studying something or working on something that you found really difficult. It's great when you hit the end of the 10 minutes and you want to keep going. Just set another 10 minutes. If you hate it by the end of that, you can always put it down, right? Take 10 minutes every day to work on something that's really difficult. Try a study session every day. It's not a huge thing to commit to, so hopefully it'll keep you motivated just for those 10 minutes to work on it. So I hope all those things help. I, like I said, I find creating necessity is the easiest way for me to learn things that are difficult, but I like working under, I don't like it, but I, I, I work well under lots of pressure. So having a, a fire under my bum to get me to draw something really works for me. Whereas trying to do things through sheer willpower doesn't always work. Who knew? <laughs> so yeah, use lots of rewards, set up projects that challenge you, and have fun, I hope. The best feeling about drawing something that you found really difficult is that breakthrough moment when you finally get it. So hopefully the more hard stuff you tackle, the easier they will get and the faster those aha moments will come to you. So yeah, good luck. Try your best. I believe in you. Let's all work hard on our art and improve and be the best artists we can be. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and if you would like to see more videos about art and webcomics, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to read any of my comics, check out our Tick Tale store. There's a link in the description down below.
thank you again for watching. Bones and I will be at Fan Expo next weekend in Toronto, so come see us. We will be at A72 in the Artist Alley. Yeah. See you there, friendos. <laughs> okay. Thanks again. Goodbye.